Welcome in, Loons fans, to Loon Talk, episode three of the 2021 season. My name is Jonathan Harrison, joined this week again by my co-host, Dan Terhar. How are you doing today, sir? Hey, excellent. Good, good, good. We're just a win away from being great. <laughs> <laughs> How much longer do you think we have to say that? I don't know. I hope it's not more than, hope by next Monday we're talking about something completely different. <laughs> yes, hopefully next Monday when we get a preview of two games, uh, we get to say... Uh, the loons are no longer winless, but uh, as of Saturday night, they are the only winless team in the league as the loons fall again, one nil to Austin FC. They lose for the third time this season. Unfortunately, we will try to put positive spins on this. Dan, your quick. You know, that, that, that alone is surprising that, that every team has already at least got a point. Yeah. Every, every I mean, we're only, we're only Minnesota has a point. In. Yeah, we're only three in. That that's a little surprising right there. So that's the joy of having, I guess, parity in your league is that no one's gonna go winless for too long. Everybody's gonna get a point relatively quickly because well, the so. teams aren't gonna <laughs> separate as much as they can in the Premier League or or La Liga. Um, right. quick thoughts on uh Austin FC that the loss on Saturday. Well, a couple of things come to my mind right away. One is, you know. I was very impressed with Austin FC. Now you could say they weren't so good. Minnesota was really bad, but um, they did a lot of things right. And yes, Minnesota was bad, but Austin FC did a lot of things right. Um, especially after they scored that goal, was that a 16th minute? I believe yeah, seven, yeah, 16, um, 17. they played the rest of the game. I mean, really textbook for the way you're supposed to play with the lead and the road. They did so many things, right. And obviously Minnesota just didn't have an answer. Um, possession time was lopsided up until the very, very end. I mean, Minnesota made it somewhat respectable in the last five, six minutes. But other than that, it was one-sided. And um, the other part that jumped out at me was just the – trying to think of the right word for it – lack of lack of just passion on Minnesota's side because the one thing that we had in the first two losses – was the team played with a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm. They were aggressive. And for some reason, they kind of fell back in that department um, on Saturday night, and that surprised me. Yeah, it was – I think as we we break down this match a little bit more um, – hold on, I, th I think my mic was off, which is weird that you could hear me. We'll start again. Sorry. I could hear you, but that shouldn't be able to hear you if your mic was. Oh, maybe it was. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why. Because it was saying my mic was saying it was down. Oh. One second. Yeah, we'll start again. Sorry. We're only a couple minutes in. Three minutes. All right, starting again in three, two, one. Welcome in, Loons fans, to episode three of Loon Talk 2021. My name is Jonathan Harrison, welcoming in you to Loon Talk here, uh, joined once again by my co-host, Dan Terhar. How are you doing today, sir? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Just, you know, a couple wins away from doing great. <laughs> Hopefully we don't have to say that too much longer. Hopefully yeah, by the... I'm ready, I'm ready to talk about something else. <laughs> I'm ready to talk about a win and break down a win and a couple goals scored. That'd be kind of nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Next week when we're previewing two matches, hopefully we can uh, talk about a win. Um, let's jump right into it. Unfortunately, uh, loons fall once again to Austin FC at the weekend. One to nil loss at Allianz field. Their second loss at Allianz field. The first time they've ever lost two games at Allianz field in one season. Uh, before we break this down a little bit more, Dan, quick thoughts on, that unfortunate loss on Saturday? Well, a couple of things come to mind. One was I thought even though Minnesota did not play well, I thought they played much more much more intense, uh, much better in the first two outings that they lost. This one that, that just didn't feel like they had – it. you know, they put some pressure on late in the match, but at the end of the day, there were like two chances – where you really thought they might score a goal. One was, you know, the kid from Wyzetta High School, Patrick Wea, almost putting a header in in the final second. So the lack of intensity by Minnesota surprised me, but 
the thing I came away with that Austin FC played an outstanding game. Now, granted, they didn't get a lot of resistance from Minnesota on Saturday night, but I thought their game plan was outstanding. Once they scored a goal, uh, 16th minute, I think the only goal of the match, they played remarkably well after that. They did everything you're supposed to do when you're playing with the lead. They were on the road. Uh, they were kind of impressive and, you know, impressive to the point where Minnesota didn't, you know, didn't have a very good outing. So yeah. those two things kind of stuck with me after Saturday night. Yeah, I would say, I think it's pretty easy to say the loons were outplayed all across the field Saturday night. Yeah. Uh, as you mentioned, Austin FC, once they got that lead in the 17th minute, and we'll talk about that goal in here in a second, they played remarkably well. You you look at the the numbers and their four, the four players or the five players who had the most touches on the field for them, one led by Alexander Ring, which we knew would happen in that match anyways, just yeah. because he's he's the focal point of getting things started for them. They We knew they would sit back. Uh, if they had the ball, they would kind of just pass it around, absorb, absorb a little bit of pressure from the opposing team, and then try and break on the counter. And you saw that in the stats by the rest of the touches from the team. The next four leading players on their team for touches – were all their defenders. And yeah. then it was Thomas Pochettino, who you normally in any squad, he would be the guy who would be leading in touches. But with the way they're going to set up, because they're an expansion team and because they're so new and figuring out how to play in this league and play together, that's probably how they're going to play for a little while is the counterattacking. And they played it remarkably well. Well, they're not going to change if they're getting points and they're getting right. results. I mean, you got to remember, they're playing on the road for another month and a half. <laughs> so <laughs> they're, if they're getting results like they did Saturday night, there's no reason for them to change. Yeah. Don't fix what's um, not broken. You know, right. And for Minnesota, if you're looking for something positive out of what's gone on so far is defensively they were much better Yeah. Uh, on Saturday. They gave up one goal. It was, you know. It was a goal that they uh, – I'm sure they've watched the film of it now several times and they wish they would have been better at it. But they seem to be having a problem right now with uh, speedy wingers that yeah. are getting, are taking advantage of the fact that Roman Metinair does cover so much of the pitch. He can't be everywhere. And, you know, that might be one of the biggest concerns right now is that the, the word may be out and teams go, you know what, they're, they're D-backs – are way up the field a lot and we yeah. can take advantage of that. And that's something that's going to have to be adjusted. Yeah. That's, that's something how that's, that's the way Adrian's always wanted to play is have his fullbacks yeah. go farther upfield. And, and you see that more today in soccer than you have in the past is that fullbacks are going up into the attack much more yeah. just because you, most teams have a defensive midfielder who are going to sit, who's going to sit back and help the the center backs. And we saw that a little bit with Minnesota this last weekend with Ozzy Alonso coming back into the starting lineup. But then you got to get more out of Will Trapp, and generally Will Trapp's kind of the defensive mid player, so he's not used to being that connecting piece or the shuttler, I guess, yeah. getting moving the ball upfield. So, yeah, another thing that other teams have keyed on it, keyed in on, uh, and it's something that the Loons will definitely have to work on and try and figure out how to fix, and it's something a lot of people have been talking about is how how to play against Emmanuel Reynoso. And I think I was talking with this I was talking about this with a buddy of mine. The loss of Kevin Molino is affecting them much more than I think anybody would have imagined. We all knew Kevin Molino losing him was going to be a big thing. Yeah. And we figured they would take a little bit of a hit, but I don't think they imagined they take this big of a hit because now without Kevin Molino, you don't have that other person taking away some of the the opposing defense's attention away from Emmanuel Reynoso. So as soon as Reynoso gets on the ball, the defense swarms him and doesn't mm -hmm. allow him any space to try and find try and find an attacker. So I think yeah. they need they need someone to come in and basically replace what Kevin Lino did. Yeah, you you clearly can see that they're taking away uh, space from Emmanuel Reynoso, and in that search for space. What normally happens with a guy that plays in that number 10 spot, he's going to push back. Mm -hmm. because that's where the space is going to be. So yeah. all of a sudden, he's pushing back. There's more separation to him and the striker, if, if we had one, um, <laughs> whoever's playing there. And all of a sudden, that throws off what he does best because he's best. We see it all the time in tight spaces. And all of a sudden, now he's pushed back, it seems like, a lot yeah. and, and trying to find some open space. Uh, Robin Lode being out. Didn't help any because 
you know, he's the the top offensive threat this club has right now. And so it's thrown him off his game. I think he got dinged up a little bit, and that's why he came out, what, about the, uh, was it 65th, 68th minute yeah, or so after an hour? So, um, so I, we haven't heard anything, have we? He's okay as far as we know. I haven't heard anything. All right. I'm assuming he's at training if he wasn't Still training. early in the week. If he wasn't training today, we'd probably have heard by now. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, they've had to change. And, you know, the funny thing is, Reynoso and Molino, very much alike. In one way, they draw a lot of fouls. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Kevin Molino, you don't draw fouls if you're not on the ball. Yep. You know, and so. If defenses aren't worried about you, they're not going to follow you. Right, right. So that's why I think there's more pressure on uh, Emmanuel Reynoso this year is because he's taking all the fouls and getting dinged up. And, you know, he's he's a tough kid, but. Man, you can't go through that night after night. And uh, so, and I don't know what the answer to that question is. You know, there's a lot of questions with this club right now. <laughs> uh, that one, I don't know. I think if you have a, uh, if you have a striker that, that people have to be concerned about, and when you go into that final third on offense, that he automatically draws attention of a couple of defenders because he's a guy that scores goals, that's going to open up some space for everybody, but it's right. been so long since we had a guy up front where people actually had to worry about him that I don't even, I don't remember what that looks like, you know, right. and yeah, hopefully, and- you know, we've got that coming in sooner than later because that would change the way teams have to play Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Right now you focus on, on uh, Emmanuel Reynoso and you've kind of controlled our offense. It's that simple right now. Going back to your striker comment. I don't think you were a fan of Ramon Abelow the other night. No, I, I didn't see anything there. You know, and obviously the guy's an accomplished uh, a player, mm-hmm. and he, but it's not, you know, maybe it's not fair to judge a guy that quickly. But if a guy comes in, he supposedly is in, you know, he's ready to go, he's healthy, and he's got a relationship, a playing relationship with the number 10, you, you, the expectations are, are rightfully, you know. Yeah, you're going to score goals. And I just, I didn't, you know, he did make, you know, on the ball that uh, Reynoso hit the pipe on, mm-hmm. he did make a, a a very good touch to get that ball to him. Yeah. And that, but, but. That's the only well, thing you can remember from him. One right? instant, one instant right. of chemistry in, you know, yeah. how long was he in? 70 minutes? I don't know. 60 minutes around 60 there, yeah. 60 minutes. Uh, that's not enough. Yeah. And this kid, and I'm talking about Reynoso, needs some help. Absolutely. Because he's going to get burnt out and, and beat up and. Uh, he plays with a lot of passion. He fouls a lot. He takes a lot of fouls, like Kevin Molino. And you, you don't want to burn this kid out, no. you know, in, in a losing effort. So, they, you know, we could talk about who's the middle back, you know, what Boxel Boxel is on his eighth center back partner. <laughs> yeah, in the five club. years that he's been here, yeah. That's yeah. Incredible. So, yeah, we could talk about that all day. You could complain about Chase Gasper. You could say that he made some bad passes. You know, Ozzy's getting old, but <laughs> none of these things none of these things matter if you can't score goals. Yeah, and they've got one on the season, so they need they obviously need to score a lot more. <laughs> Easy to say that. Um, yeah. One one I I guess another positive thing out of this early season struggles is that we're starting to see young guys who young guys get minutes who we probably wouldn't have seen get as many minutes as they're getting. Yeah, well, and that, one thing that's really digging for a bright side. <laughs> right? Try that to thing, Adrian. The good thing is you're getting some guys in here. Right? So cool. Well, I mean, <laughs> Justin McMaster, the first round pick, I, I have liked what I've seen in the couple minutes. He's finding good yeah. spaces. Granted, he's super raw because he's so young and so new to this league as a rookie. I, it's hard to get too excited, but from what I've seen, I've liked what I've what I've seen from him because he's get, he gets into the right places. We've seen him now on the left and the right. Uh, we saw him a little bit on the right last or on Saturday night. I've liked what I've seen from him so far, and hopefully that bodes well for the future. Well, you know, look what they did with three draft picks that right. you know had an impact almost right away on this club in 2019. I know uh, Dane St. Clair didn't have an impact right away; yeah. he is now, um, but. You know, Hassani Dotson and Chase Gasper. And so there's no reason to think that McMaster can't be the same type of player. Um, 
it's a small sample size, but yeah, what we've seen so far is encouraging. Uh, and then, you know, out of desperation, he puts in Patrick Wea, uh, the kid from, from Wyzetta High School. And mm-hmm. uh, I get confused now. He went to, I think he, he went to St. Louis University. For like half a semester, yeah. For half a semester. And then they said, hey, we need you. Yeah. And I, and I, don't, think, I don't think his time is now. But at 17, at 17, he came in with so much energy mm-hmm. and the aggressiveness of the, the one ball he did get crossed in and put a header. I mean, you don't realize that kid came really close to scoring a huge goal in his first appearance. I mean, just that, would, that, would, that was in. his first touch as a pro yeah. and had it gone in. That's a that's a heck of a way to start your professional career. Well, and I might be expecting too much of the kid, but right. Hey, you know, desperate times, you know, and if he's going to go out there and play aggressive and make things happen, I'd rather have him out there than someone that's just invisible for 20, 30 yeah. minutes at a stretch. Yeah. What good does that do? <laughs> so, you know. We've seen plenty of invisible strikers over the past, what, three, three <laughs> four years? Oh, my God. You can just, the list is just this yeah. long. Hopefully, it goes on and on. hopefully, as I mentioned uh, last week, Adrian Ono coming in will reverse that trend for Minnesota. And as I mentioned last week, he can't get here soon enough uh, based off of the one goal they scored this this season. Um, yeah. Another thing that we missed this last week was Robin Lud, who was easily the best player for the team the first two weeks. And it was clear how yeah. much they missed him this week. Yeah. And he's the one guy that for the most part gets, you know, a few shots on goal. We, yeah. you know, we talked about this in the pregame on Saturday night. I said, you know, we're going into that match. We had 40 shots. So yeah. something's, something's working. If you're getting 40 yeah. shots, cause they're not all from, you know, 40 yards out They're they're, you know, so, you know, put the ball on, make the keeper, make a save. They were a little better at that on uh, Saturday and the loss, but so it's not like nothing's working. It's just, when it comes down to finishing in that final third, there's too many guys that are missing the mark, too many guys that, you know, just don't have that scoring touch. And I don't think, you know, well, I'm not going to say that because that'll be, that'll be later. I'll bring that one up and break it down. So oh, they, need, they need someone to come up and, and, and be a threat to score goals. And um, besides Robin Lode. All you right, know. so let's let's move on from reviewing this game to talking about uh, the loons in a big picture. The weather was nice on Saturday, though. Yeah, at least we had that. Uh, it was a beautiful so question, night in Allianz. So the question is, how much trouble is Minnesota United in? Three straight losses to open up the season. One goal scored, seven goals given up. How much trouble are the loons in? And I know it's early, but the question has to be asked after three straight losses. Ah, <sighs> yeah. You know, they've still got 90% of their schedule left. And every, you know, every time they lose, it becomes a little more desperate and they get a little more uptight. They get a little more stressed. There's more and more pressure mounting. I didn't think that Saturday night would go anything near what it did. And that scared me so much more than the other two losses. Yeah. You know, first loss on the road at Seattle. Come on, that that right. if you panicked over that one, something <laughs> wrong with you. Um, Even though it was four nil, if you panicked over that one, that was a little bit. It, it really bad. didn't feel like a four nil right. loss. Come on, um, and then you lose, you know, your home opener, and you start to go, "Ooh, boy, this is not a good start." Yeah, I still wasn't too concerned because I really thought that they would they would not play the way they did against Austin and Austin would not be as good as they were. So yeah, now you're concerned as a, as a co as, as a fan, you can be very concerned and you can write them off if you want, but as a, as a club, as a coach, as a coaching staff, you can't go anywhere near there. No, it's way too early in the year to say we have, we have to win is a must win because if you say must win and you don't win, then what do you do? You just right. tank it for the year. I mean, so you have to be optimistic if you're, if you're Minnesota and if you're Adrian Heath and if you're the players, because if they find a way to score some goals, they win in Colorado, they get a couple more wins. All of a sudden you're even at three and three and, 
And then you wondered why you pushed the panic button. So, you know, it, it's weird that you can go from before the first game was played because they had a good preseason and you thought, okay, this is going to be a team that's going to battle for the Western Conference top spot or at least the yeah. top three, four spots, home field advantage. So I can't go from, hey, this is going to be a, this team's a contender in the West to they're horrible. They're the same team. They're the same team. They've just played poorly for too much of the time and can't finish. So are they in trouble? It depends. Are you talking about are they in trouble that they're going to be the worst team in the league? No, they're not going to be the worst team in the league. Are they in trouble that they might not make the playoffs? It's way too early to say that. You can look at some stat that says teams that go 0-3 don't make the playoffs. Right. Well, most teams that go 0-3 are teams, clubs that just don't never had a chance to make the playoffs to start with. They're teams like uh, Cincinnati. <laughs> I don't know why you're mentioning them. We'll get to them later. So <laughs> if they're 0-3, you go, yeah, they, but they weren't going to make the playoffs anyway. All right, right what happened? I, I just know, yeah. on my screen. You must have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm getting a little worked up here. For podcast listeners who don't know, we also Whoa. are on Score North's YouTube feed, and Dan's camera went a little fuzzy there, <laughs> like he had, like a spit mark went onto it. Uh, but we'll keep moving on. Here. That was weird. I think I must have spit on the screen. I'm getting all worked <laughs> up. See, see, I got you worked <laughs> up here about how how much trouble the Loons are in. You know, no, they're not in trouble. As far as as far as a uh, team that's going to uh, win the West, uh, they probably they've probably they probably screwed themselves out of that right now. Yeah. But but again, it's such a yeah, remember it's a full season this year. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of games left. So and also also it's a full season where you only play the Eastern Conference twice. So the majority of your games are against Western Conference teams. Right. And in the past, because of how playoffs work and qualifying. Those games always meant more. So now, basically, the rest of your schedule, plus, minus two games, is all Western Conference teams, so you can make this up. Yeah, and so is it going to be easy for them to climb out of an 0-3 start? No, but, you know, let's revisit this in, you know, a month and a half, and if they're still, you know, in the basement of the West, yeah, uh, this season is lost. But there's there's too much talent out there. Mm-hmm for this just to be over three games in. So it's easy to push the panic button, you know, as a fan, but as a team, it's too soon. Right. Just, it's way too soon because there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go once you push the panic button. So yeah. this team needs to just go in, play with confidence. And, you know, I really think that, you know, they go into Colorado and, well, we're going to get into Colorado, but I don't think this team is as far away – from winning games as it probably appears to people. Mm -hmm. I think once they get a little confidence and they open up play in the midfield, I think things could change rather quickly. They kind of did last year at times, you know, when when they looked like, Oh my God, this team, this team can't score a goal. And then all of a sudden they'd open up and they'd score one goal and then the floodgates would open up. So, you know, it's just, I'm ready to, I'm ready to stay positive for a little bit longer. (laughs) How much, how much of this panic do you think is partly is based off of how high people thought of this team or how highly people thought of this team going into this season? Because going into the season, there were mentions after the Ramon Abela signing that they were going to win the Western Conference. They're going to get to the MLS Cup Finals just because they had brought in a real forward. Yeah. How much do you think that people are panicking maybe a little bit too much because of these first three losses based off of the fact that Everybody and their mother had this team going so far. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's hard, you know, the, and, and any player, any coach will tell you, you want high expectations. You want people to think you're going to be good. That's what everybody wants, you know. Yeah. Uh, Minnesota, you know, they, they they did their time as the underdog and the sleeper and, you know, mm-hmm. the team that nobody wanted. You know, <laughs> we're done with that now. I mean, we're, they, they, had, they had a great season. They've improved every year. Uh, last year was really exciting the way they played at the end of the year. And, and so, yeah, it makes it tougher when the expectations are higher. Um, I don't know. I just, I think that's, that's fans job to keep 
the team accountable and to have high expectations. I mean, I've been a Minnesota sports fan my whole life. So have you, right? Mm-hmm. So my life's a lot longer than yours is. So, <laughs> you know, you learn to roll with the punches and it gets frustrating at times, but um, this team, you know, is going to be better than what they've shown, especially last Saturday. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know what it'll take. I it just, I just feel like there's, you know, Emmanuel Reynoso hits hits the hits the pipe, hits the goalpost square. I mean, you couldn't have hit it any more square. It almost came right back to him. He almost got to put it back in. I mean, if that ball is is a couple inches to the right, it goes off the post and in. And I have no reason to believe that that might not have been enough to spark them to to score another goal and, and win that match. So mm-hmm. they're they're close. They're close. Zero and three doesn't feel close, but. Um, I think once this team turns a corner, there's a lot of talent there, and they're going to be fun to watch. Yeah. Once again, you are listening to Loon Talk, Minnesota United uh, conversations right here the on Score right North. Up there. <laughs> yeah, the Loon right, right up the there. right up right over there on yeah. the the YouTube feed. You can find us anywhere you find your podcast, as well as Score North's YouTube channel. Every week, we record every Monday night. Uh, coming up now, we will take a quick look across the league or around the league, however you want to put it. Um, Dan, I want to start off with Minnesota's uh, opponent two games ago now. Rail Salt Lake, they get a 3-1 win over Sporting Kansas City. Two early wins against opponents many said they would lose to. Are Rail Salt Lake for real? Well, it's too soon to tell. I mean, okay, they're better than we thought they were going to be. Mm-hmm. Just like Minnesota is not as good as we thought they were going to be. Yep. Does that mean at the end of the year that Real Salt Lake will be ahead of Minnesota in the standings? No, I don't. I don't <laughs> no. no. It's just too early. I, I I don't even look at the standings this early in the year. They, they just oh, mean so on. little, oh, you know? No, I, I, I can honestly tell you, and we get our, we get our game note pack. Yep. There's always the league standings in there. I bypass that. I don't even look at it. <laughs> I remember our first season doing the broadcast together. I, I think it was after like the second or third game. And I, I looked at you in the post-match show and I, and I said, Dan, you know, where the loons are They're in a playoff spot right now. It was like four <laughs> games in. And you're just like, no, we're yeah. not doing this. It's four Where's that in. playoff line? <laughs> we're like, you're like, we're not doing this. We're not going to do this every week. Stop this. No. <laughs> no. And later in the year, that's a lot of fun. And, and, and knowing that the Western conference almost every year, comes down to the final weekend to decide not only who's in the playoffs, but who's at home. Mm-hmm. I, you know what? Minnesota will probably be right in that mix. Hopefully they're above that mix and, they, and they'll, you know, like they were last year and they don't have to, you know, it's not a, a stressful nail biter just to get in the playoffs, right. but you know, if they keep struggling, that could be, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's just too early to look at the standings. RSL is probably better than we thought, but, they may go through. They may go through a stretch where they struggle to win. You know, their cute little goaltender might give up some bad goals and and lose his confidence or something. I don't know. So, who knows? I don't know. Can he lose his confidence? He seems like a pretty confident kid. Man, he's got a little too much of it, but you never know. <laughs> right. You never know. You know, it's not too early to tell how bad Cincinnati are. Unfortunately, at once again, uh, eight goals let in over the last two games, two shutouts for them. Not a good start to their season so far. No, nah, if you're not playing good defense, it's a long year. Have you know, they ever played good defense there in Cincinnati? Yeah, I mean, if you if you're if you're playing good defensively, like you know, losing one to nothing, at least you can look at it and go, all right, you know what, we got to find a way to put a goal or two in, and then we're in every every match. But if you're giving up, you know, three, four, five goals in a match, well, there's no way you're going to win. I mean, <laughs> no. you, you're Doesn't done. Matter how much money you spend on a Brazilian striker, you're not going to win if you're letting up. No, you got a Brazilian a striker who never gets to touch the ball. Yeah. We don't have a striker, and, you know, we'd like one that can touch the ball. So so defense, yeah. I mean, I'd much rather cover a team that's losing 1-0 than one that's, you know, getting blown out 5-1 right. to one and 5-2 to because yeah. you got no hope at that point. So. Thanks for a long season. Yeah. Um, FC Dallas, they get four goals from four different goal scorers in a resounding 4-1 win over a Portland side. Many expect to do – a lot of good things this season. Um, I don't think that's the note that we're interested in, though. Their goalkeeper, Dallas's goalkeeper, starting goalkeeper, or was it Portland? I think it was Portland's goalkeeper. Portland, yeah, yeah. Portland, his goal, their goalkeeper did not have a good game, but he is six foot seven, easily the tallest goalkeeper in league history. That's a that's a big dude. 
And, and you know, with goaltending, and, and a lot of people think that all you, you know, because most goaltenders are tall, mm-hmm. most goaltenders are over six foot. Because you do need to have a whole nother level. Yeah. Well, and then you wonder if he's quick enough, you know, Yeah. because the difference between a guy that's six, one and six, seven, you're going to assume is probably quickness. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll see what happens, but you know, eh, players are taller all the time and, you know, but I, you know, there's a few goaltenders across the league that are, you know, five, 10, five, nine, maybe a couple, but not that many, you know, most of them are over six foot now. So. The final note that I want to hit on in Look Around the League, uh, the Galaxy, they had a good start to the season, two wins for for them, five goals by Chicharito uh, in those first two games, none by the Galaxy uh, yesterday Chicharito. as they lose like 3-0 Chicharito. to Seattle. It's a fun name. It's a great name. Uh, yeah, lose... I, didn't, I didn't see it. Did you see any of that? Uh, I didn't see much of it. I was out and about, but Seattle crushed them 3-0. Uh, yeah. Galaxy moved the ball around a lot better but they still have their defensive woes that they had last season. Um, yeah. The other note is that Seattle have easily taken to this new system, and it's clearly not a problem for them that they switched to that 3-5-2. And it's, they had three tough opponents to start the season, Minnesota, LAFC, and then the Galaxy. And they've gotten two wins, one draw out of it. Seattle's good. No, Seattle's a good side. Um, they're going to do what they always do. They're going to be somewhere near the top home field advantage in the playoffs. That's just what Seattle does. And as far as the Galaxy, I think when you've got a team that coming in, um, you know, their question mark was defense. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be some nights when their defense is able to get the ball out of their, you know, final third, clear their area, get it up front. They've got a guy that can score goals now, and and he's going to score some goals. They're going to win some matches. But I think you're also going to have nights where your defense just can't get it done and things fall apart. So, you know, I don't think that they've completely turned things around there yet. They've got some work to do still too. Right. Um, Next up for Minnesota is a trip out to Colorado Rapids this Saturday, May 8th, pre-match at 8.30 p.m. Kickoff at 9.08 p.m. Right here on Score North. Score North on 850. Score North mobile app. Yeah, super late game. I'm taking a nap. They're always my favorite, these late 9 p.m. starts. Yeah, and, you know, for this club, right now, this week, they will prepare to go out there. And I guess the good thing is they don't need to spend much time worrying about Colorado, worrying what the Rapids lineup is going to look like, worrying about the altitude, worrying about the weather. You know what? This team has to worry about one thing and one thing only, and that's their own, you know, 11 players, uh, what they're going to do with their lineup, and how to – uh, come out and play, I think, like they did in Seattle. They played with, in, you know, we, we talked in that first half at Seattle about uh, how it felt like a, a continuation of the Western Conference Final. Yeah, absolutely. The intensity level was there. The energy was there. Um, they've got to find that. And if that means putting in some players that haven't started yet, I, and you know what? I, it's not going to happen, but I'd have no problem if he said, you know what, I'm starting the kid Patrick way up front. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. But no, again, it's with not, how- but again, at this point, I'd be willing, I would accept any decision to st- as long as it's a change and it puts more energy in the lineup. So, yeah. you know, because it, it's clearly an issue and you're going to be on the road and man, you got to come out with some fire. I'd imagine if we're going to see anybody at the at the top there for Minnesota, it's probably going to be Juan Iguodelo. I liked what I saw from him against Real Salt Lake. He moved around a lot better. He pressed uh, the the opposing defense a lot better than Ramon Avila did. They don't have as solid of a connection between him and Reynoso, but they haven't played together as often. So I would imagine, I'd predict we'd probably see Aguadelo, uh on Saturday against Colorado, but I have I have no idea yet. You don't you don't think he goes back to Robin Load? If Load's healthy, then probably. If he's good to come back, then maybe. But I would. I don't know. Would you want Hassani out on the left again? Because he would. With the way they played him, he was dropping more into the middle of the field to combat Austin's three man midfield. They really weren't Which, playing him as a, as as that left wing, really. No, and um, it left it left too much space for Chase on the left to go up into. I as much as I don't like seeing Robin on the left, I don't know where else. Like well, Ethan wasn't the greatest on the left. 
Is there so a chance he's with, with the left? Maybe wing? starts McMaster. I like what I've seen so far. Give I mean, him the a full kids, ninety minutes. See what happens. Has he earned? Has he earned a shot at uh, at a start? I don't know. I mean, He's stepping in his way at this point. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we don't get to see training on a daily basis. Which, mm-hmm. you know, this is the second year of that. And it's it's really tough because when you watch training, you can see what players are doing. You can see, you know, who's you know who's you know making it happen. Because that's where they're gonna that's where they're gonna earn their spot in the lineup. Right. It's not mm-hmm. what they do for a couple of minutes in a game. It's what they do for five days at training up at the National Sports Center in Blaine that makes a difference as to whether or not they're going to be in the lineup or not. So, yeah. um, you know, maybe that's a change. You know, and then you got to wonder, okay, is is Ozzy going to be the starter? You know, he brings fire to the lineup, but, you know, how much how much do you play Ozzy at this point? And is Jan back as a starter? Or, you know, so there's, there's a lot of things we'll find out this week going into it. But, you know, I, I wouldn't <laughs> – I wouldn't fault the coaching staff for any changes they make because at this point in the season, you don't push the panic button. Yeah. You don't say it's a must win game, but you certainly, you certainly shuffle your lineup to try and change some chemistry, change some confidence levels in people, put guys in there that may be a little hungrier than other guys, even if maybe they're not quite as skilled. Um, and that's not a panic move because Everybody on that roster, well, I should say everybody, almost everybody on that roster is should be there as a professional soccer player, you know. So to play anybody in that roster shouldn't be shocking to anybody at this point when you're 0-3. And we've always seen in the past, after a loss, it's the lineup usually doesn't say the same. Adrian Wilf switches. Right. So I imagine there is going to be some change, whether, whether that has to do with guys coming back from injury or not. I would imagine there'd be some change, but going back to the master point, who's standing in his way at that left that left wing spot? Because that would be an Ethan easy write write this down. <laughs> There's gonna I be changes that. on Saturday. <laughs> Anytime they lose, the lineup will probably change. Anytime they win, if there's no injuries, the lineup will probably not change. Right. It's, it's pretty simple. Adrian's it's done big. that throughout his past. Uh as you mentioned, yeah. write that down. You want to get to it? Let's do it. All right. Write that down. So they let's use it. Let's bring it in here. Write that down uh, as we as we embark on our second week in a row of write that down. If you're watching on the YouTube stream, we also have the rules right alongside us. Uh, three soccer related predictions from each of us or a guest, uh, whoever joins us from week to week. We will start having guests here pretty soon. Um, at least one of the predictions has to be Minnesota United related. Um, we will keep track of correct and incorrect predictions. Your correct predictions are called goals. You will get goals for every correct prediction you have. We'll keep track of those throughout the year. And the most goals at the end of the year wins the coveted golden boot, whatever the trophy that will be at the end of the season. We still don't have that. Yeah, yet. We find out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what Very we cobble excited. together. Very excited uh, to find that out. So let's get to our accountability session. Uh, nothing comes off the board for me yet this week. I'm still in the process of watching through the TV broadcast, so I don't know if they've said, all right, all right, all right yet. Uh, if someone wants to let me know, at John Harrison 90 on Twitter, and we'll just call it quick. Um, but, Dan, you had all three of your predictions come off the board this week. Um, you said fans will sing Wonderwall this weekend. Unfortunately, they didn't. Whoa, 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 whoa they did. Why would they they sing? were singing in the pregame. Okay, we need a ruling on this one. <laughs> they weren't they singing in the pregame. Wonder, I heard them singing Wonderwall at the stadium. They don't sing Wonderwall before the game. They only sing it after the game. Sure, I heard them. Yeah. You said David, o- David Ochoa will allow three goals this weekend. He only allowed one. <sighs> and then you did say Chelsea will keep a clean sheet against Fulham. You got that correct. Yeah. This wasn't part of the prediction, but you did say that you had them winning 2-0 and... They won two nil. That was my going to be my prediction, and then I just went with the clean sheet. So nice prediction. Uh, so <sighs> our record so far, you're the only one on the board with goals. One goal. Uh, you have thirty three percent correct. One out of I think it's over. Job. I think it's over. <laughs> <laughs> Competition's done this season. Yes. <laughs> All right. So let's get to it. Let's hear. Uh, you want to start us off this week? I'll go first this week. All right. All right. Let's hear. Minnesota. Minnesota United. We'll get a goal from a true number nine. That that means Robin Lude does not count in the month of May. <laughs> write, that, write that down. Okay. You're not going to say who. You're just going to say a true number nine. Does it matter if we get one from a number nine? 
Okay. okay. I mean, the guys we've played there so far don't look like they have a clue to score a goal. So I guess I'm kind of counting on uh, Uno to get in here and, and make <laughs> it come true this month. So. All right. So well, first... with most teams, that would be a that would be like well, duh. Yeah. But with this club, we haven't seen much of a true number nine <laughs> for very long. Anyways, um, so my first prediction, and this might be a surprise. The Loons will keep a clean sheet this weekend against Colorado. Wow. That's going out there. I don't have much faith I in Colorado's right. attack. They only scored one goal last night. It was it came off of a free kick, a wonderful free kick. But mm-hmm. I think the Loons will pull it together. They'll get a, they'll keep a clean sheet this weekend. I'm not saying if they'll win, but they'll at least keep a clean sheet. All right. Write that down. Write that I hope down. you're right. I hope, I, hope, I, hope, I hope you get the points on that one. Um, Minnesota United – We'll make the playoffs in 2021. I like it. Write that down. Optimism. That's right. You're not you're not hitting that panic button yet. No. Next Monday, I might take that back. <laughs> they go <laughs> 0 and 4, then yes, just, we might hit that panic button. You got the panic button. It's right here. I'm just not pushing it yet. You've got one. I got don't it. have one here yet. I've got it close. <laughs> All right. My next one, Chicharito. As I mentioned, we'll bring him up later. Chicharito will be the leading goal scorer in the MLS or in MLS this season. He'll be the leading goal scorer in MLS. Yep. Yeah. All right. Don't believe it. You don't believe the early season hype. Well, no, but I mean, the guy jumped out to a great start. So got five goals this season. A lot can happen. A lot can happen. How many did he have last time out? Uh, He only had two last season. (laughs) So wasn't a good season for him last year. All right. All right. Final you're, prediction, you're, sir. you're gonna work Chicharito in as much as you can because you like saying it. That's I mean, all. why not? He's a former Manchester United player. We all know my I okay. I'm changing my third one. Okay. I'm changing my third one just to make it interesting. On the spot change. These I'm are changing it right now. I'm changing it right now. Chicharito will not be the leading goal scorer in the MLS. Ooh. Write that down. This is an old Judd move. He would go against what someone yeah. else said. Uh, on the, on the move, like I channeled my inner Judd and uh, went with that one. So there you go. Write that down. I like it. We may have to get him on here sometime for write that down. We should. All right. My third and final one, PSG will come back and beat Man City in the Champions League final and move on to the cha- or in the Champions League semifinal and move on to the Champions League final. That will come true this week. Write that down. What do, when do they play? I think tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow or Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay. All right. We're writing that one down. At least you'll have a result in then. You'll have two of them in this week. <laughs> I'll figure out my first one. I'll figure out the all right, all right, all right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. you said that the, the broadcasters uh, – would I work said it would in. come. They it would they would work it in at some point somehow. Either one of them saying it or a graphic of some sort. So, I'll ask Kevin. Yeah. yeah, and I'm guessing that there was not much uh, fun and laughter and all right, all right, all right's going on in that one and nothing lost. In the pre match show, they could have. Could be. I don't know. I mean, all right. Any final intrigued. thoughts as we uh, once again on the bottom of the screen here? If you're watching on YouTube, pre match 8:30 p.m. this Saturday, kickoff 9:08 p.m over on Score North on AM 1500, the Score North mobile app, or if you're on the web, live.scorenorth.com. Dan, any final thoughts as we close out this week's show? No, put the ball in the net, hit the goal, <laughs> make their goaltender make a couple of saves, and, um, you know, we'll know more about the lineup later in the week. But, yeah. um, you know, they they missed Robin Lude. Um Roman Metnair was probably their, one of their best players on the – on the pitch on last week, he continues to be tough back there. So the defense looked pretty good. Let's hope they can do what you said and, you know, pitch the uh, clean sheet on, on Saturday night and get that first win and <sighs> breathe a little. No hitting the panic button here nope. on Loon Talk. Nope. We're just watching the panic. We're just looking at the panic button. We're not touching it yet. It's We're there. it up. It's getting there. It's coming getting close, there. but nothing yet. Not touching um, once again, you're listening to Loon Talk. You can find us anywhere you find your podcast. Please remember remember to rate, review, and subscribe. It helps us get found by other people as well. Also, if you want to tell a friend who is also a Loon fan or just likes MLS talk that we are a thing, point uh, an enemy. our tell way. Something you don't like. We don't care. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sir. Uh, once again, you can find 
him over on Twitter at Dan Terhar at D A N T E R H A A R. You can also find me on Twitter at John Harrison 90 over on Twitter. That will do it for this week of loon talk. Good night. And thanks for listening. See ya.